Hi guys, I'm Andy from eLight. Today we have a very special guest, Rachel from Rachel English. She's going to share with us some advices on how to improve pronunciation. Let's talk to her now. Hi Rachel, it is amazing to see you today. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me here and it's great to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. So you got 1 million subscribers on your YouTube channel. How do you feel about that? It's a great feeling to reach 1 million subscribers. I actually had a party in December where I got to meet many of the people around the world who watch my videos and that was a big thrill for me. So I understand that you've been teaching English for a while. Can you talk about your journey? I started making YouTube videos about 10 years ago and I was living in Germany studying German and I was living with people from all over the world who were also studying German and some of them were also interested in English and sounding more American so I was giving them tips and someone said to me, you're really good at that and that's what gave me my idea to start posting these videos and my videos really focus on pronunciation. My interest focuses on the voice really more so than language learning and language acquisition. So my channel focuses heavily on understanding Americans, sounding more American, and sounding natural when speaking. Ah, I see. So how do you get into learning about pronunciation? And was it difficult? I went to graduate school for opera performance. And so when I was there, I took a class in the pronunciation of Italian, French, German, and English for the stage. And we learned about phonetics. And for us, it was less important to be conversational in all of those languages. And it was more important to sound professional and native when singing in those languages. So pronunciation was always really, really important to me. And one thing that I recognized was important was when I was learning a new language to find the sounds in that language that I did not have in American English. And then to try to really learn them as a brand new thing, rather than to substitute in a close sound that I already knew and that I was comfortable with. Because I know when you start doing that, then you're never going to truly sound native in that language. So that was something I had to challenge myself to do. First, learn what are those sounds, and then learn how to make them and try to sound as natural as possible. Imitating native speakers is great for this. Hmm, I think I understand a little. Speaking of imitating native speakers, have you taught to students from Vietnam or Asia before? I have, yes. Actually, Vietnam is one of the biggest audiences for my YouTube channel. And a lot of the students in my academy, Rachel's English Academy, are Vietnamese. Personally, I try to imitate native speakers and I find it very, very hard. What are some challenges do you think that Vietnamese students or Asian students face when learning English? Vietnamese students and students from other Asian countries do face some challenges when learning English. First of all, we have different sounds. But on top of that, the character is different. Placement in American English tends to be lower and feel like it's more in the body, whereas in other languages it can feel higher and like it's more in the face, the vibration. So when I'm working with students from Vietnam or other Asian countries, we're often working on relaxing and opening up the throat so the sound can fall a little bit more into the body. Also, American English is a stress-timed language. This means that we have some longer syllables and some syllables that are really, really short and they can sound mumbled and unclear. This can make listening comprehension hard, and it can also make it hard to sound natural if you're not willing to really shorten up those syllables. Vietnamese is a syllable-timed language, which means every syllable is the same length. So switching from that to something where you're supposed to be making some things very short and rushed can feel less clear. It can feel like it's not good English. And that can be a stumbling point for some students because they're uncomfortable with what is actually right in American English. Do you have any advice for these students? When it comes to studying English, I think we have to approach it a couple different ways, especially when we're no longer children who are just absorbing the language. I think when we get a little bit older that we have to study intellectually what's happening. That means understanding the different sounds understanding physically what happens to make a new sound, also understanding something like stress-timed versus syllable-timed, 
So studying all of the details of the language, but then we have to also work on it, train it. So we're not just thinking about the intellectual aspects, but we're actually getting these ideas into our body, into our habit, so we're able to actually use them. So then it's also a matter of training and imitation, listening to native speakers and practicing out loud. So it is all about practicing. What about online or self-taught students? How can they study effectively? There's a lot of stuff out there to study with on the internet. So I think when you find a teacher or a couple of teachers that you like, it's really important to follow them, not just to randomly watch videos. I don't think that's gonna add up to much learning. I think when you go into their channel, you look at their playlists, even better if you follow their mailing list. That's their direct line of communication to you. And they want you to succeed. They want you to learn. And so I think when you engage more with the teacher and with what that particular teacher is putting out, that it gives you a more comprehensive view of what you can learn rather than just randomly watching some videos here and there. Hmm, I see. But students that learn by themselves tend to get bored and give up very quickly. How do they motivate themselves? Sure, when you're studying on your own, it can be easy to feel isolated, and that is hard to stay motivated. But I think that there are lots of opportunities online to join communities. For example, on my Facebook page, it's pretty active. People comment on each other's comments. Same with the YouTube channel and those comments. I also comment, and I respond to people's questions. I like people's comments. I read them. I listen to them. And I think when you take it a step further from not just watching the video, but from asking a question or answering a question, that it can start to make you feel like you're a part of something bigger. It's not just you and you're part of a community. And especially if you ask a question and get an answer, that can be really motivating. That can help you feel like, oh, okay, I have other resources here. And it helps people feel like they can invest more of their time. Thank you for the advices. Going back, to pronunciation. You have a video series about it, right? Well, it's not just a series, but it's really my whole channel that focuses on pronunciation and spoken English, and this includes listening comprehension. And I'm so interested in it because I think so many people have spent a lot of time learning a language and they're so good at writing. Their communication is flawless, but they can be hard to understand. And a lot of people have never had a native speaker as a teacher. And so they've never gotten the chance to really hear it and be taught by a native teacher. And I find this really motivating um, that there are so many people with such a high English level that just need a little tweaking, even just coaching, not even teaching, but coaching, accent coaching, in order to really reach their goals. Because for a lot of us, our goal is in-person interaction. It's not just written interaction. And so when you can get someone's confidence higher in speaking and in understanding, then you're really opening the door for more human communication and contact. What are some difficulties for people you think when they start to learn about pronunciation? Well, I've found that a lot of people don't know where to start. And then when they start to understand everything that they might want to study, it can become overwhelming. There are so many little details that make English what English is. And I try to make it really clear step by step how to handle that. Um, but overwhelm is, is a common problem. And then another common problem is when someone's learning a totally new sound, they feel silly making it. It's unlike any sound they've ever made before. And so sometimes I'll have a student who will do something right, but then they immediately back away from it and do it their old way because that was more comfortable. And for some students, it really is about leaving what feels comfortable and finding a new version of right and letting themselves do that. I feel very comfortable talking to you. Can you share with us some tips on how to learn pronunciation more easily and effectively? Sure. I put a lot of time into coming up with the path that I think is the best path for studying. For example, I deal a little bit with character and placement and stress at the beginning. 
Some people just want to do sounds and they think that's all there is, but sounds really only make up not even half of what makes someone sound natural when speaking. So I like to hit those non-sound concepts first and then when we move into the sounds, then I can be teaching students about how a vowel will sound different when it's stressed than it will when it's unstressed. And so all the time that we're learning, we're learning generally not just an isolated concept, but we're learning how it fits into the bigger picture. And I think that's really, really important. That's something that I strive to do on my YouTube channel and also in my academy. About a year and a half ago, I launched an online school called Rachel's English Academy. And that's really where I put not just the videos to teach, but the training materials to change the habit. Another huge mistake people learn is they stop learning when they've learned it with their mind. And I always say, your mind doesn't change the habit, it's your body. So we have to train a new idea once we learn it. And this is so true with language. I always equate it to a musician or an athlete who does the same thing over and over so that their body gets it. And then they don't have to rely on their mind so much because when you're speaking in conversation, you've got so much going on you don't want to constantly be thinking about what word do I want to say and how do I pronounce it? So that's where the training comes in to help you sound more natural as you're speaking. And I know that you have a lot of students out there that really want to improve their speaking and their listening comprehension. So I wanted to offer them a deal, your students specifically, to get into my academy at a lower price. It's $14 a month, but I want to offer a $5 first month so if you go to rachelsenglishacademy.com and sign up, you can enter the code VIETNAM and that will make your first month just $5. It is a subscription, so it's ongoing and the price will go up after the first month, but anyone can cancel at any time. And I hope that that discount code can help some people get in there and start learning and see what this journey is all about. Thanks, Rachel. I appreciate you being here. I think that your advices will be a great help to all Vietnamese students. If there are any chances, we'll be very happy to welcome you here in Vietnam. We do hope to see you very soon. Vietnam is very high on my list of places that I would like to visit. I do have a two-year-old son and I'm expecting a second one right now, so travel will be hard for the next few years, but I really hope I make it to Vietnam. So that was a very interesting talk. What do you think? Please comment below and tell Elite what you learned today and what you want in upcoming videos. Bye.